Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be part one of my season's tutorial guide. If this is what you're looking for, please stay tuned. Alright folks, so this is a guide to the Seasons mod and basically all aspects of it. So this is just going to be an introduction to that series that I'm going to do. Um, and we're going to talk about just some of the basics of Seasons in this episode. And we'll continue on. The goal of this series is to have 15 to 20 minute videos on different aspects of Seasons to give you guys kind of an overview. So that way by the end of the series, you guys will know everything you need to know about Seasons. If you do have questions as we go through this series, even if it's something I plan to cover in a later video, please drop it down below in the comments to make sure I cover it. Or if you think I forgot about something that should have been mentioned, please mention it down in the comments because I definitely will forget things otherwise. So anyhow, going off of this, this is the Seasons mod. This is for all platforms, this aspect of gameplay. So this applies to everyone. I am going to be doing this uh, tutorial on PC because I do everything on PC. Now, this is a mod by Realismus Modding. This is on the Mod Hub. This is 56.91 megabytes to download. Um, and this has been out for a, a while now. So um, if you want to download this um, onto your PC or you want to look at it on the Mod Hub, there's a link down below. There's also a link down below to Realismus's modding uh, guide to this. They have written out a guide that is very long on how to do all the aspects of this. And I plan to read through that guide to make sure I hopefully cover everything in that guide as well as everything I know about Seasons as we go through this series. So in Seasons, inside the Mod Hub, this is what it reads in the description. Winter is coming and spring, summer, and autumn too. The Seasons mod changes the fundamental way to play Farming Simulator by introducing Seasons and changing all aspects of the gameplay, such as weather, growth, economy, vehicle maintenance, and animals to suit. Seasons 19 has gotten even more immersive with new visuals and sounds that better integrate the, into the game and the gameplay. Experience the trials and tribulations of a real-life farmer, worrying if you will get all your crops planted on time before it gets too cold or too dry for them to germinate, and whether you will complete the harvest before the rainy days of autumn when crops will be wet. Beautiful visuals to suit all se suit the seasons, such as the, the birth of life in spring, the richness of color of autumn, and bare trees on a bleak winter's day when you are clearing the snow or doing forestry will help to fully immerse you in this new environment. See to the management of your herds with the new breeds of cattle, pigs, sheep, and chickens, or take care of horses for a steady income. For further info on gameplay, check out the Seasons section of the in-game help. A full list of features can be found on our website as well, and it has their website listed. So, as far as all that goes, oops, sorry about that. Um, the first thing I actually want to mention um, as far as all this goes um, is I want to mention something as far as the Seasons versus the Seasons Geo. So, um, the image that you see on your screen right now, that is the icon that is for the Seasons mod on the Mod Hub. The other things you can download are what's called Seasons Geos. Um, so there's two examples up there. There's, I think there's probably hundreds in the Mod Hub, quite honestly. The one on the left is a geo that's specific to a map, and the one on the right is one for a region. And again, there's there's not one for every map per se or every region per se. It just depends on what modders have done. So... And the reason for using a Seasons Geo is if you want to adjust the weather and the temperature and kind of the, the overall climate of the map you're playing on. So you can take this map that we're on now, Erlingrat, and you can make it like New York if I put in the Seasons Geo New York. Now, as I go through this series, I'm not going to be running a Geo. It is not required to run a Geo to play on Seasons, so you don't have to have one. I'm just going to be using whatever Seasons thinks it as far as its base um, options are as far as everything goes so we're going to be going through all that so those are just kind of an overview because i figured some people would ask about that um, if i didn't mention it so i wanted to make sure i mentioned it now we're just going to go through again just an introduction so as you know there are four seasons you're going to start in spring we just started this up i'm in new farmer mode so if we go to the, actually the upper right hand corner of the screen i'll make sure you guys can hopefully see it a little better starting on the on the far right, you see our money there. That doesn't change $100,000. Then moving over one slot, you have the time. That's still the basic, the way that it goes. Then moving over from that, it says 01 early spring. So 01 is part one of this year. Early spring is, that's early spring. So part one of early spring, essentially. And then that symbol to the left of that is just the symbol for spring. Then if you move into the section next to that, you have a ambient temperature and you have a ground temperature so the 34 degrees is the ambient temperature and the ground temperature is at 39 degrees now moving one over from that you have a symbol of a cloud and that just means that it's cloudy out that's your weather so that does vary greatly and matter quite a bit so there's just kind of a basic overview you will always start on the first day of spring when you come in here um, into a new gameplay of seasons so if we hop into the main menu this is nothing different this is what you see 
Uh, the one thing you will see that is different is there's not an animal screen at the top. You will not find your animals in here. You will find them in a separate screen, which we'll go over in a second. So moving through, everything else is pretty much the same. There are still contracts on seasons to do different jobs. You can still lease and borrow the items. That's all the same. You can still borrow money on seasons if you want to, or you can repay it. It doesn't matter. So you can still borrow money and repay it on seasons. I'm um, going over here. This is all your equipment that you have. So this is just what I started out with. So again, you can look through all this and it's all there on there for you if you want to look at it. Um, going over here, cell points. Everything is the same on here. And the map, as far as what you start with the new farmer mode, is going to be the same as if you played um, without seasons turned on. So all of that stuff is mostly the same. The only difference in here is that you're not going to see the animal screen. All right, so in order to open up the seasons menu, I have the help screen on. So if I turn the help screen on up there in the upper left-hand corner, if you hit left alt and S, it'll open up the help screen. Now, again, I don't know what it's going to be on consoles, but you should be able to open up the help screen and it will tell you. So this is the seasons menu. This is what it's going to open up into. So we're going to quickly go through all these and give an overview of these, especially this, excuse me, the settings we're going to take a look at as well. So this is the calendar. So this, what this means basically is it's telling you when you can plant and when you can harvest crops as well as other information. So if we look through here, um, down here at the bottom, it has a key essentially. So planting season is green, harvest season is the yellow. So um, some of them you can plant later in the year and then you'll end up harvesting next year. And so that's fine. So you can plant wheat here and then harvest it, he harvest it here usually, sorry. Or you can plant it in this window and usually you'll harvest it earlier on in this yellow window here. So again, and that's as far as all those complexities of how to plant crops and stuff, we're gonna go into that in greater detail in a future video. This is just kind of an overview. So planting seasons, and you have your harvest seasons. Now looking at the top of the screen here, this is spring, this is summer, this is autumn or fall, and this is winter. I'll probably often refer to this as fall because that's how I call it in the real world, but I mean autumn as well. Now you're gonna see one through three, four through six, and seven through nine. So each of these are chunks. This is how many days in game is in each chunk. Each one of these chunks basically represents a month of the year. So if we hop out of the seasons menu and look up there, like we said, early spring up there is 01. So we're 01 early spring, then 02 will also be early spring, 03 will be early spring, then 04 will be middle mid spring, and so on and so forth. And that will change up there, um, which we'll see as we go through this uh, series. So back up here again, that means that we have three days per section of a season. So nine day total seasons. Now remember, those are nine day seasons. You can adjust that and we'll go over that here in just a minute. So going down here, um, it has all the crop types in game and it has a temperature. So what does this temperature mean? That's the temperature that you should have. Now, again, you can get away with some other stuff as well, but in general, that's the temperature you want the, so the, the soil to be when you plant. So 41 degrees, it says it's blue because the soil temperature is 39 degrees. So if I open that menu back up, 41 degrees, it'll be blue if it's not quite warm enough yet. And cotton, you'll probably never be able to plant on this map. And again, it doesn't even have a geo for it on here. So certain geos won't have um, certain crop types. So the default geo does not have cotton and you can't grow cotton and it does not have sugarcane. You can't grow sugarcane because you can see how warm you need it to be. And you can adjust these to Celsius as well. I have mine in Fahrenheit because that's what I'm familiar with. That's what I work with. Uh, but again, if I go, um, I can't, I can't adjust those into Celsius, which we'll actually see in the settings here in a second. So, and this red line is right where you're at. So we're in day one of spring. So this will move to here tomorrow and then so on and so forth. So that's basically just a quick overview of some of the stuff that's in here. So again, you just want to wait until it gets warm enough to plant and you want to plant inside of a planting window and you have to wait until you can harvest. So that is the calendar. Now, if we move over, this is the weather. So down here, you can see it says forecast uncertainty increases with time. So what that means is as it gets further along down here, that may or may not be the actual weather. So it just kind of depends. Now up here you have type. So we have today, and then you'll see that today there's four chunks because it's noon. So every three hours you have a new section and same through, through through Tuesday up to a certain point, you have three hour chunks and then the time kind of ends. And this is still Tuesday. So this is just in the afternoon sometime, Tuesday or the evening or the night. And then Wednesday has a forecast for the day, th Thursday for the day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so on. So, and these don't represent, so I know I mentioned here, this is basically a month of the year and the second month of the year and the third month of the year. These don't represent, we're not actually gonna go through months in here worth of days. This is real in-game days. So um, you'll have, so one through three here to get through this chunk, we're gonna have today, Tuesday, and Wednesday, if that makes sense. Those are the three days. And then mid-spring is gonna start on Thursday. So mid-spring will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then late spring will be starting on Sunday. 
So looking at this, some of this will matter a lot more when we start talking about crops and things like that, but I just wanna give an overview of what's in here. So the type of weather, cloudy, as you can see through here, it's gonna be cloudy. Uh, right there, that's the emblem for snow. Then we have rain, and then we have partly cloudy through here, and then if there's just a sun on there, it's sunny, which we don't have any of that coming. Uh, max temperature, so basically here's a temperature range. So average temperature, the min and the max. So minimum temperature, you can see through here on right now, it's 44 degrees is the minimum, and going through, there's minimum temperatures as you go through. So as you can see, snow there, 28 degrees, then average temperature of 32, which is freezing, and 35 degrees. And not like actually like freezing, as in the expression that's literally freezing, if you don't know that with Fahrenheit. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, just moving through there, you'll see that it warms up a little, little bit later on there, so you have a high of 70 degrees there. Now precipitation, this is how much it's gonna rain or snow. So um, this is in millimeters, so nothing going through here. Then on Tuesday with that snow, it looks like we're gonna get a millimeter of snow. And um, on Wednesday, it looks like we're gonna get a lot of rain, so seven millimeters of rain. And now if you look down here at the precipitation percentage chance, this is the chance, so 0% chance of it through here. And again, this can change at any time, just like normal weather predictions can. And then here, you have a 90% chance of snow, and here you have an 80% chance of the rain. So 90% chance of the snow, 80% of the rain, and then back down to zeros. Moving down here to wind speed, this is how windy it's gonna be outside, um, which doesn't matter a ton, but you actually can tell on the maps, which is pretty cool. Um, this will affect the drying potential, which we'll talk about in a second. So various wind, wind speeds in meters per second, very high winds there, high winds, really high winds, no wind, decent wind through there. And down here, here's the drying potential. So a negative sign means that it's probably, a, it's not gonna dry you a very low drying potential. It's not gonna, it's gonna actually maybe even get worse or potentially get worse. Um, a zero means it's gonna stay the same and a plus means it's gonna dry more. Um, so the plus is usually good. So if you're doing hay and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna make sure you have pluses out and you're gonna wanna look at the weather ahead of time. Because also in seasons, just another quick note, hay, straw, stuff that's left outside on fields, will slowly rot and go away. You'll lose quantities of it. So you wanna be careful. So if it's raining, you're gonna lose a lot of your hay or straw or whatever sitting out on the field. So just be aware of that. Now that is basically the weather forecast in a nutshell. Now moving over, we have some crop info here. So we have frost resistance and we have drought resistance. So look at these as two different charts. So if we split down the middle here, which actually I wish they had just put a line down the middle. I think that'd be, um, I think that'd be helpful, but we'll read the blurb down here at the bottom. The potential for frost damage increases as air temperatures fall below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is freezing. Potential for drought damage increases when the soil water content is below 12%. Use the measurement tool to monitor the soil water content. And we're gonna go over the measurement tool in the next uh, video. So we'll talk about that next. This is again, just an intro. So going through this, uh, wheat, frost resistance. When it's a seed, it has medium frost resistance. When it's young, it has very high frost resistance. So the frost is probably not gonna do anything to it. And when it's fully grown or mature, it has no frost resistance. Now drought resistance, when it's a seed, it has no drought resistance. When it's young, it has low drought resistance. And when it's ma mature, it has medium drought resistance. And going through different crops will be different ways. So just kind of take a look at that. And this might be helpful if, depending on what seasons geo you're using or what, you know, what your plan is essentially. So, and you'll just kind of have to take a lot of these aspects and kind of put them together and kind of help figure out what you're gonna do. And we'll go over some more of this later in detail. Next up, we have the animal screen. So here's where the animals are now moved to. We're not gonna go do any detail in this. We're gonna go through all the animals later in this series. So I'm not gonna cover anything on here. We're just gonna move on. Um, under the economy, it has everything you can sell on a map because this is kind of how the prices vary. Now, and again, there will be, and these are all the different uh, breeds of animals that you have now with seasons. But if we go up here, we'll look at wheat, for example. So here is where we're at now. Here is the current price for wheat, or at least the average price for wheat. So it's between these two here. So it's probably about, what is that? Six, 680 ish, maybe seven, not quite 700, maybe closer to 640 or so. But anyhow, it's between 580 and 726. So um, if you look down here the next day, it's gonna drop a little bit. And then the best time to sell wheat appears to be right here. So this is how you kind of want to plan ahead and see when the best time is to sell the crops that you have uh, so you get the best price. So like if we go down to, uh, one that's really uh, clear cut is wood chips. Is It's not great at all in the summer. You don't sell them for hardly anything in the summer. And in the winter time, they're worth a ton more. So here you're selling them for around less than $100 per thousand liters. And up here, you're selling them for almost 250 per thousand liters. So um, this is a huge difference here. And this will change. Um, this is kind of just an estimate um, as you go through the year. And if you load into a map and there's nothing, it just has the first day, 
that's okay. That's normal. As it, you go through the year, it will fill this in. So that way the next year you can reflect on it. So sometimes it just works if you don't need the money to hold on to stuff and just keep keep it as you go through the year. So that might help. But that is how this works through here. And again, different ones are different prices. Wool has some spikes through there. Eggs have two spikes on there. Sugarcane is pretty high, but again, you can't even grow it on this map. Um, so yeah, there's different price ranges through all these, but this is a pretty helpful um, one to look at. And then as far as selling your, your livestock, you'll want to look at that for when the best time is to sell it as well. Now moving next, we have the crop rotation planner, which this will help you plan out your crops, which I'm not going to go over in this episode. We're going to talk about that in a future episode. And then if we go back down here, we're going to finish up on the settings. So again, I'm set in Fahrenheit. If I go to Celsius and go back here, it's now everything's in Celsius. If I go over here to settings, I can go back to Fahrenheit. So I'll probably keep it on Fahrenheit since that's what I'm familiar with. But again, just understand you can switch it around. Uh, seasons introduction, you can turn that on or off. All that means is when a new season starts, a blurb will pop up. So essentially just a blurb on your screen will pop up and say, hey, it's a new season. You can turn that on um, or off. So I'm going to leave that off um, down here. Season length, so this is the length of the seasons. A year is four seasons, so right now it's on nine day seasons. So there's three days in each of the third of a season. So nine day seasons, nine days, nine days. You can set that down all the way to three day seasons if you want and then go back in here. You'll see that it's down to three day seasons and you can set it all the way up to the highest, which is 24 day seasons, if you're really crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but you can do it at whatever. It is increments of three because everything's kind of divided into threes. Um, we're going to probably leave ours uh, down. We're probably going to move down to three day seasons just as we go through to make it easier for us. Crop moisture. So this is, um, if you want to turn this off, that can make it a little bit easier. But this means that your crops have to be to a certain level of dryness. They have to be dried out a certain level before you can harvest them. So that might be something that you want on or off. Um, so we're going to leave that on. Um, down here, snow tracks, vehicles compress snow when driving over it. You can have that on or off. Either they compress the snow or they don't. Snow mode on or off. You can turn snow off if you don't want snow, or you can turn it to one layer only. So when it's on, you can have up to two layers of snow, I believe is the max. Um, and that'll be just the way it is, which is pretty deep snow at that point. Now, crop damage scale. Uh, so lower numbers result in less damage. So if you want to adjust how much crop damage occurs, um, you can adjust that there. Weed intensity. So if you don't want any weeds or you want a ton of weeds, um, they'll take a look at that. Now, as far as weeds go in seasons, um, they're sporadic. They don't, you can't turn them. Well, actually, I believe you might be able to turn them off just using, you can just if you just go in here and turn weeds off. Um, oh no, it doesn't even change that. We'll go through that in a second. So there's some different things in here we actually probably should cover in this episode. Seasons is fairly complicated and I will remember stuff as we go along. But uh, yeah, so weed intensity, you can turn that down if you think it's too hard. I'm gonna leave it all at the default. But essentially, normally weeds would just pop up on a field as a growth state. So when you go into here, looking at weeds, there'd just be weeds on a field. Now there's probably no weeds anywhere right now. Um, but in seasons, they just kind of pop up in little chunks throughout the field. So you don't actually have to clear the whole field of weeds. Um, it can make it more complicated or less complicated, depends on how you look at it. Um, but yeah, just understand that it is a little bit different. So yes, to wrap this up, we'll go in here and look at some of the things you can't turn off or adjust anymore. So as you can see, you can still adjust your time. You can adjust the name of your game save, your economic difficulty you can adjust. Traffic can turn on or off, dirt. All this stuff is pretty simple. This is all pretty normal. You can adjust if your uh, fuel usage is default or low. Um, you can adjust if your helpers buy or they don't buy. Crop destruction, periodic plowing, lime, and there's weeds. You can hand turn weeds off and on. Um, right in there so some of this some of the settings moved into different areas but and then all of this is the same through here so you can still change all your currency but um, that's overall that and then in here you will find um, help for seasons down at the bottom i believe miscellaneous seasons there we go so yeah there's lots of different um, things you can read in here about seasons and again i'm going to go through all this stuff um, as we go through our seasons tutorial but that is the end of our introduction to seasons if you guys enjoyed this video drop a like down below if you haven't already hit the subscribe button up on your screen to join the, the farmer cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos i may post this has been farmer cop thank you all very much for coming and watching